This video is to demonstrate the proper technique for inserting a central line catheter in the right internal jugular vein. The right internal jugular is the site of choice for the majority of anesthesia providers. Here is a list of the following supplies needed for this procedure. Gloves, sterile gloves, surgical cap and mask, sterile gown, chloroprep, tagoderm, central line kit, and ultrasound machine. After gathering the appropriate equipment, place the ultrasound machine on the opposite side of the patient and turn it on for its use. Next, place the patient supine in a slight Trendelenburg position with the head turned away from the provider. At this point, identify the anatomical landmarks of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and clavicle. As shown here, the yellow line represents the anterior head of the SCM while the red line represents the lateral head. The approach is to insert the needle at the apex of this triangle where the red and yellow lines meet, while advancing the needle towards the ipsilateral nipple in the direction of the green line representing the clavicle. During your pre-procedural scan, it is important to identify the appropriate vascular anatomy, including the internal jugular vein and carotid artery. As you can see, the internal jugular is identified with its compressible nature, lack of pulsatile flow, and irregular shape. In the majority of patients, the internal jugular vein is noted to be lateral to the carotid artery. Next, with friction, apply chloroprep, starting at the insertion site and moving towards the perimeter. Allow the prep to dry for three minutes before placing any sterile drapes. Next, open the central line kit using sterile technique. Begin by opening the kit away from yourself. Open and don your sterile gown and gloves. When placing a sterile gown, carefully grab the center of the gown near the neck. Place your hands inside of the sleeves and extend your hands toward the white sleeve cuffs, being sure not to expose your fingertips. As the gown opens, beware that it does not come into contact with your surroundings. With your fingers still behind the white sleeve cuffs, open and place the sterile gloves having the gloves come over the white cuff of the sleeves. When available, have extra staff secure the back side of your gown to prevent contamination. Set up your kit according to the provider's preference. If inserting a central line catheter before the patient is anesthetized, draw up two to three milliliters of local anesthetic to improve the patient's comfort during insertion. During setup, it is a good idea to familiarize yourself with the items provided in each kit. Begin by connecting needles to the appropriate syringes, and for beginners, lining up each item in order of its use so that you are prepared for the procedure. Finally, prepare the catheter by removing and connecting the appropriate caps and flushing each port so that the line is ready for insertion. Next, identify the direction of the drape and remove the backing. Center the hole over the insertion site and unfold the drape in a sterile manner. Next, place sterile gel into the ultrasound drape. Have an additional staff member drop the probe into the drape while you advance the cover over the probe and cord. Secure the head of the ultrasound probe with the provided tape or rubber bands and secure to the sterile field. If your patient is awake, use 1% lidocaine to localize the skin. With your ultrasound probe in your non-dominant hand, identify the patient's anatomy. While keeping the internal jugular vein in the center of the screen, insert the needle towards the ipsilateral nipple, avoiding the direction of the carotid artery. 
Continue advancing with slight negative pressure on the plunger until venous blood return is noted. Ensure the needle tip maintains its position within the vessel during this time. Once blood return is noted, carefully remove the syringe while keeping your non-dominant hand on the needle while you prepare to insert the guide wire. Begin inserting the guide wire, being sure to stop if resistance is felt. It is important to monitor for any irregular EKG changes at this time, primarily PVCs. If noted, slowly withdraw the catheter until such irregularities are no longer seen. Slowly remove the needle while keeping control of the guide wire. With the scalpel pointing up and directed lateral to the carotid artery, create a small nick in the skin large enough to accommodate the dilator, being sure not to cut the wire. Next, advance the dilator with a slight twisting motion over the guide wire and remove. At this point, you are ready to insert the central line catheter. Begin advancing the catheter over the guide wire to the approximate depth of 15 centimeters, depending on the patient's height. Be sure to continue monitoring for any EKG changes at this time. While keeping the catheter in place, remove the guide wire through the brown port. Next, with your sterile syringes, aspirate and flush each line. Once completed, cap and clamp each port. Secure the central line using your preferred suturing technique. For dressing, depending on your institutional policy, place a tegaderm with or without a bio patch and then remove the drapes while securing the catheter. Be sure to dispose of all sharps in the appropriate red bin. The gold standard to verify venous catheter placement is an anterior posterior chest x-ray. Other alternative methods include pressure transduction, manometer testing, and blood gas comparison with an arterial sample. It is important not to rely on the color of the blood to confirm placement. Finally, document the line according to institutional policy. This concludes our demonstration on central line catheter insertion.